a pine forest in the late 1700s, near what is now Fayetteville. The pipes, a familiar sound to Scottish settlers in the Argyle community. A pine forest near Fayetteville, March 10th, 1865. The last cavalry battle of the Civil War is about to begin. A pine forest near Fayetteville, late 19th century. The trees are supporting a thriving pine tar industry. The Roaring Twenties near Fayetteville. The forest has been cleared to make an exclusive golf and hunt club for wealthy northern investors. Present day Fayetteville. This is what most people would expect to see around here now. It's the home of Fort Bragg. But it's clear there's a lot of history buried in these pine forests. It's the job of the Army's Cultural Resources Division to research it, uncover it, catalog, and preserve it. There are to date over 4,000 archaeological sites recorded on Fort Bragg, and we're not even done with the survey. You find everything from cemeteries that have headstones in Gaelic up to a fantastic early 20th century military architecture. The range and the diversity of history here probably rivals that of any other comparable size region in the country, and few people know that. What I have laid out on the table here in the laboratory for you are some artifacts that represent 10,000 years of human occupation and land use in this area. Starting with the earliest of American Indian stone tools represented here, American Indian pottery, a period of Civil War activity that took place on Fort Bragg. And last, we have artifacts related to the turpentine industry. This is called a hack tool, missing its wooden handle, that would have been used to scar the tree to get the sap to run. Using standard archaeological techniques, the historic sites are being systematically researched and preserved. We have to rinse it in uh, deionized water. And once that's completed, we dry it using a chemical dehydration process to remove all of the moisture from the metal. Uh, of course, oxygen and water are the primary culprits that stimulate the rusting process. This is a piece that we just received here in the lab. Um, it's actually a lever action rifle that probably dates to about the 1920s. One of the other procedures that we do is we repair historic markers. And this, of course, is the foster son of Jesse and Lavinia Ellis, um, who he died at age two in 1849. One treasure that has been preserved and restored is Long Street Presbyterian Church and its associated burial grounds. We're standing in the 1848 Long Street Presbyterian Church. This is the third church of the Argyle community, which settled here in 1765. It's very classic in its architecture of full Georgian height, the windows, uh, the layout, the symmetry of it. The pews are segregated for the sexes, and we have in the gallery where the slaves would have sat during their worship service. Presbyterians may not know that this was the home of Presbyterianism in America, right here in this community. Many of the ancestors, the people who established this church, built it and worshiped here, are buried in the cemetery just outside the, the building. The gravestones date back to 1776 and are important sources of historical data, a kind of window into the generations of Scottish settlers that called this area they named Argyle their home in the New World. Monroe's Crossroads Battlefield is the site of periodic reenactments and memorial ceremonies marking the last cavalry engagement of the Civil War. Ready. Many artifacts from this era have been uncovered and preserved. We have bullets, 
a bayonet, buckle fragments, and also larger items like a cavalry scabbard. A recently acquired section of Fort Bragg incorporates a place known as Overhills. Overhills is one of the most unique places I've come across. It, it began in around 1906. The land was purchased by wealthy northern investors who established fox hunting, polo. They had an original Donald Ross golf course constructed in the early 19-teens. They would eventually build their own clubhouse, establish stables. It's possible to get a sense of the magnitude of this estate from what's still standing. The Rockefellers employed local families to run the estate, and many descendants of these families still live in the area just outside Fort Bragg. The path of the rail line that connected this area to Greensboro still can be seen, passing by the freight depot that served the estate. While many sites and buildings have been protected, the reality of a modern army post is that not everything can be saved. So the treasure trove of history extracted from those sites becomes even more important. Many people are very surprised that there's a whole program at Fort Bragg whose sole purpose is to protect and evaluate these diverse cultural resources located on this restricted land space, if you will. We are the stewards of these resources, but we're also the ones to help share that with you.